be clear. The military is full of psychopaths, sociopaths, narcissists, and rapists. As a veteran, I think this TikTok points out something that we should all understand about the military. It is not only a breeding ground, but also a sanctuary for antisocial personality disorders. And before y'all come up in my comment feeds talking about you anti-American, first of all, uh, I'm black, okay? Second of all, if you are in the military and you're not one of those, a psychopath, sociopath, narcissist, or rapist, then I'm obviously not talking to you. And if you're wondering who I am, I'm a licensed mental health counselor that does PTSD assessments on veterans to help them get their benefits from the VA, which is a whole nother corrupt system. And in the years that I have been doing this, I can't even begin to describe the amount of accounts of sexual assault or sexual violence that happen to veterans and soldiers within the military, all branches. And you know why we don't know about it as a public is because the military has its own unchecked courts. So I'm gonna start talking about it. So this TikTok by Therapy by Denise points out something that I think is critical to understand, and it is the nature of the environment that the military puts people under. And there are many layers to this, but the core result of the military's environment is to create this toxic brew of behavior where people are compliant, complacent, but also negative behaviors are not only allowed to fester, but to some degree are structurally encouraged by the system. I mean, think about it. The military, by its very nature, is an organization that is surrounded around being callous towards death and suffering. Quite literally, the United States military especially is designed in such a way to foster a lot of racist sentiments in its service members so that whenever the United States arbitrarily declares war against some random country because they have a natural resource that we want, that the American people are ready to go engage in this war, which really means having a complete callous disregard for the lives of the people on the other side, which also requires a certain degree of callousness and mentality and a complete ignorance about those people and in their everyday lives. When we take all of these things together, you can also see how a lot of the violence that the military commits around the world ends up being committed to other service members because one thing that we know for a fact in the United States military is that sexual assault is rampant and it has everything to do with the mentality that is encouraged by the structure of the system. The number one rule in a sense really is obedience but then there's also these structures that exist where Every chain of command is obviously separate from each other and they have their own internal justice systems so that nepotism runs rampant, favoritism runs rampant, and the strict rules around rank put people in positions where if somebody is the victim of a sexual assault, it becomes nearly impossible for them to get any type of justice because more often than not, the perpetrator is somebody higher ranking than them, which by definition under the structure of the system means that they are going to be more trusted, which means quite literally the worst people will be the ones who are the most trusted. But then when you layer on top of that, I'll tell you my experience when I was in the military, the people with kind hearts that joined the military who naively thought that the United States was doing good in the world, realized pretty quickly that that wasn't the case. And most of those people left the military after their first term, or sometimes even sooner if they could manage. Then there's of course the people who don't like the toxic workplace environment, and they also quit as well. So who are the people that tend to stick around the most? They tend to be the people who operate very, very well in toxic workplace environments, which means that the people who are high ranking very often will maintain a lot of the beliefs that are necessary to function in that system, whether that be having enough compliance to just overlook the problems of the system or being an active participant in making everything worse. Stack all these things on top of each other and you have a war fighting machine that's perfectly comfortable doing horrific things to people in other countries as well as to its own service members. And you have one that's structured in such a way that it can be secretive enough so that people very rarely find justice whenever they themselves are the victims victims of the violence from their peers. Now, I will give an asterisk to this video. We shouldn't be like ableist and just assume that everybody with some type of personality disorder is going to by definition be a harmful person. But the very nature of the military is to create an environment where people 
feel comfortable committing harm to others. Once again, that is the very nature of the military as an institution, the United States military in particular. All that is to say, as somebody who spent eight years in the military, it is the last thing that I would tell anybody to do. Not only is it not heroic and really just part of a harmful imperialist system that commits violence around the world needlessly, but also the service members simply do not get treated properly and in fact are subject to violence from their peers with great regularity.